we're in the truck. You know what that means. Also, we're right there if you want to show them the sign. Yep. I'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. Today we're continuing the C10 build for my dad. But first, we have quite a few surprises. If you guys watched the last video, if you haven't first, go check that out. But you guys saw that we stripped the whole Tahoe that came with the C10, but we learned that that Tahoe had a 4.8 engine in it, as opposed to the 5.3 LS that I had originally thought it came with. So the 5.3 is a very good platform. I mean, so is the 4.8, but there is no replacement for displacement. The 5.3, my initial thoughts were I was gonna do a whole turbo build on it and just get a good amount of power. I mean, we weren't gonna go too crazy with it, but something that's, you know, dailyable, dailyable, and still has, you know, a good amount of oomph, so whenever you step on it, it just goes. But with it being the 4.8, the 4.8s are so cheap. I mean, you can get them in the junkyards for a couple hundred bucks, and that just wasn't right. It just didn't sit right with me as far as putting that in a truck that I was building for my dad. So I ended up going on Copart, and you know on Copart you have endless possibilities, but we were looking for something in specific. We wanted a 6.2 liter LS, but it had to be with an automatic transmission. So we ended up picking up this Camaro. It's hot. It's finally in, or not in, but it's on the trailer. Kind of sketchy, but we got it strapped down pretty good, so it should be all right. Let's see if we can make it back to the shop. This Camaro, like when we saw it on there, it was like a hit or miss. Just like the Camaro that we had bought for my fiance's uh, LS swap on her E46 BMW. This was also a hit or miss because it had no wheels, no keys, so we didn't know if it was gonna turn on. We didn't have any pictures of the underside, and it kinda looked like it had been in a shootout, so we weren't sure what we were getting with it. But hey, sometimes you just have to take risk, otherwise you will never get the reward. So we did end up taking a risk. We won the actual car itself, and we were excited to go get it. And you guys can see, you know, when we were picking it up, it just looks like maybe it was a miss. So what we're actually gonna end up doing today though is we're gonna strip all of the components off of it. I mean, it does look like every body panel on this car has been dented, but I'm sure there's still a few things that we can resell and recoup some of the money that we spent on it. So we ended up getting the whole car for right around 5,500 plus all the fees and all of that. So I'm pretty sure it was right around 62 something, but we did get it for a pretty good deal. The mileage is right around 55 to 60,000 miles. We've actually had it for a few months at this point, and I just don't remember all the details off the top of my head. But yeah, it does have relatively low mileage, and it will be perfect for the C10. I mean, even if we wanted to do anything else as far as more power, there, like I said, there is no replacement for displacement. We can slap a supercharger on it, slap a turbocharger, whatever we wanna do. It is a very good platform to start on. And the transmission that comes in this is a 6L80. I was hoping I could have got a CTSV with the 6L90, but those prices were ridiculous. And we're trying to keep the C10 build not, you know, ridiculously priced where like some of those on Barrett Jackson, but we want it, you know, somewhat like a budget build, but still doing it the proper way. So that's why this was a perfect platform. I mean, 5,500 bucks, we're gonna throw, you know, a couple more thousand dollars at it as far as putting everything together in the C10, refurbishing everything that we can, and maybe even get some more power out of it. But yeah, let's go ahead and walk around the car and let's just see how everything looks. Another few updates though, the C10 is actually on its way to North Carolina right now because we are also moving to North Carolina at this point. So we have a couple more days left at this old shop before we're supposed to be packed up and out of here. That's why we have this box truck out here. But I mean, I'm sure you guys already know we're already relocated. But, you know, just in terms of the timeline of this whole build, I'm just letting you guys know that way you guys are up to date as far as what's going on. I can probably test start this car by flashing out all of the security measures that are put in place for requiring a key. 
I just don't have the time to do that right now. So we're just gonna strip it and then we'll deal with it once we get back to North Carolina. So the whole plan right now is we're gonna strip the whole car, all the body panels, all the mechanical components, anything that we might be able to use for the C10 or anything that we can resell. We're just gonna strip it all and then we're gonna take the chassis to the scrap. So let's see how long it takes us. I'm gonna guesstimate probably around eight to nine hours total as far as taking off everything that we need and everything that we can resell. That's including some of the interior components, some of like the steering columns, all of that stuff. But yeah, you guys will just time lapse most of this. I mean, it's, we are, you guys already saw us doing it on the Tahoe. So now it's time to do it on this Camaro. So I'm currently recording this voiceover in present day, which is 2021. And I know that I didn't really, I felt like I didn't really clarify, you know, as to why we went with this powertrain, the drivetrain, all of that. And I think a lot of people were expecting something different. And honestly, if I was building this truck for myself, I probably would have went with something different. But at the time of planning this build, when we first picked up the C10, and even when we picked up this Camaro, it was actually, we didn't have any plans of relocating back to North Carolina at that time. So, you know, I wanted something that was reliable, something that anybody can actually work on, something that, you know, if my dad was driving in the middle of nowhere, he can, you know, literally go to any shop and they should be able to, you know, diagnose or fix something if it were to go wrong. And usually whenever you put all of those characteristics together, it always points to an LS. So that's why we were looking for, you know, an LS. And the reason we went with the 6.2 out of the Camaro was because, I mean, that's probably one of the the best ones that you can get for a reasonable price, especially wrecked, and there's a lot of Camaros out there. So it wasn't too difficult for us to find this Camaro with the 6.2. Now, the other restriction that we had was it had to be an automatic. And I know a lot of people are probably wondering, why would you choose an automatic? So the reason we actually went with an automatic is my dad is actually kind of handicapped. So he doesn't have full functionality of his right arm or right hand for that matter. So he needed something that, you know, I wanted him to be comfortable. I didn't want him, I mean, he can technically drive a, a manual transmission car, but, you know, it's just more of a task for him. And I want him to be able to drive this truck whenever he wants to. You know, he can drive it every day. If he wants to take it on a trip somewhere, I want him to be able to do that. So automatic was, you know, the best option for us. And I think, I mean, you really can't go wrong with the 6L80. It's still a very strong automatic transmission. And if we ever wanted to do, you know, any kind of crazy power upgrades, we can build that transmission. So... Overall, I think this was the perfect fit for us to get this Camaro, and I'm really glad that we did. Now we gotta figure out how we're gonna put it in. The box truck. It's big. So as you can see, I dropped the whole front subframe with the engine and trans and everything attached, including the front suspension. We just dropped that whole thing as an assembly. Um, you can see the whole wiring harness as well as the ECU. All that stuff is right here. And pretty much this is the easiest way to do it because I mean, literally you saw, I just dropped the whole thing. It was six bolts for the subframe. Just unhooked all of the drive shaft, the exhaust, and the steering column and all that. So now the dilemma is how we're going to get this inside of here. So we do have a forklift that we can use, that's my neighbor's. And what I'm thinking is in order to save a lot of time, and you never know what we might use from this, none of this stuff is really damaged. So what we're thinking is just put this whole assembly right on a pallet, and then we'll just use the forklift to lift the pallet put it inside the box truck, and once it's inside, we'll put it on dollies, and then we can roll it around in there and secure it however we want to. And that will also make it easier, easier for us to remove it in the future once we get back. So now all that's left to strip on here is the rear end. We are gonna take out the full rear end, and then we might take a few bits and pieces from the inside, like the cluster 
and stuff like that and then we should be good to go make sure you subscribe and also hit that bell notification so you're notified when we upload our next video we're finally back to present day and you get to start seeing actual work being done on the c10 we will see you guys there